Okay, let's do this. The time has finally come. It's vacation time, everybody. Whoop, 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 whoop. It has been so long since my mom and I took a vacation, especially since we went to Disney and since we did a Disney cruise. Thank you very much, 2020. Thank you very much. Round of applause for that pile of burning garbage. But we are finally going back to our home, away from home, Florida, and the Disney bubble in and of itself. And I am very excited. I'm excited to get some use out of that low park attendance. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. But because we're going on vacation, of course, we got to have books. Because if you're not reading on vacation, what are you doing? Like, relax. Take a breather. At least bring one book on your vacation, okay? And I think my mom and I are going to have plenty because this bag is full. And um, honestly, there's probably too many in here. But I am just so excited to be going on vacation. And this excitement just fell over into the books I want to read on vacation. I've truly been bouncing back and forth between what books I want to read on vacation for a month at this point, but the time has come to make the final decisions, and these are them. So we're going to talk about them in this video. I'm going to briefly tell you guys what my mom is bringing on vacation because she's not here, but she is going to be on the vacation with me, obviously. She's paying. And then I'm going to tell you in more depth about the books I'm bringing because I know why I chose them. And I, I, I don't know. I can't jump into my mom's mind. I know her very well, but I don't know her enough to know why she's choose the books she's chosen. So let's dive in, shall we? While my mom has always been the person who only reads nonfiction books, especially on vacation and just in every aspect of her reading life, it's only really been nonfiction. This year, she has definitely dipped her toe or her whole foot into the mystery thriller genre. So when we did the video where my mom bought as many books as I could get in 60 seconds, one of the books we got is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, and I think this is one she wants to bring on vacation. This is not one I know 100% she wants to bring on vacation, but she only has three books that I know that she definitely wants to bring, and this would be the fourth one. And if she doesn't bring this one, I'm throwing in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because I want her to read that book. So it's either this one or A Good Girl's Guide, and this is the one she has knowledge of. She doesn't know my plans with the Good Girl's Guide, okay? This one, I don't 100% know what it's about. All I know is that it has like an 80 people wait list on the Libby app with my library. And it had like five, six people online, or not online, on the wait list for it, the physical copy at my library. So it was very popular when it got put into my library a couple months ago. And when we saw it on the 50% off table, we had to get our hands on it. So this says that when Chloe Davis was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life, leaving Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, a local teenage girl goes missing and she has a flashback to that summer. So I imagine her father didn't actually do it and she's trying to dis uh, discover who actually did and probably why her father would confess to such a crime that he did not commit. But I don't know, I've never read it. If my mom really likes it, then maybe I will have to give it a try. A little bit of an exchange, perhaps. I read this one, she reads a good girl's guide. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. It's a possible deal that might be happening. But this is the first one. And then the next one is also a mystery thriller. And this one I know she definitely wants to read because it is by Lisa Jewell. And my mom does like Lisa Jewell's books. And that is Lisa Jewell's newest one that I've heard nothing but good things about. None of this is true. When I tell you I have seen nothing but raving reviews of this, 
I mean, I have seen nothing but fantastic reviews of this. I've only seen five stars. People say this is like one of the best like domestic mystery thrillers that they've ever had the pleasure of reading. And I hope my mother feels the exact same way. She is the first one to get her hands on this library book. And I just really hope she enjoys this book. This is about a podcast, and while my mother loves podcasts, I don't know how she's going to feel reading a book with a podcast in it. It'll definitely be interesting, but she loves Lisa Jewell, and like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about this, so I think my mother is going to really like this book. Now, I know I said my mom was a non-fiction girly, so you're probably wondering, Madison, where is this non-fiction you spoke of? It's right here right here, okay? So, the two biographies my mother picked for this vacation, she always brings at least two biographies when we go on vacation, and this year she picked Bob Barker, Priceless Memories, and Mike Tyson's Undisputed Truth. The two differences in these book sizes is it's unmeasurable like it is insane so this one is by Bob Barker who sadly just passed away a couple of weeks ago he was the host of Price is Right for several 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 years and this is just his biography um it has pictures in it which seems super cool I just love I love looking at the pictures and biographies but I'm not gonna read the biography you see you see, uh, but my mom wants to read this one and I hope it's good. Neither of us knew this next one was going to be this big. Um, that is Mike Tyson's Undisputed Truth. This baby is like 500, 600 pages and we did not know that. That was not something that we knew when she ordered it. So kind of when I saw the size of this book and my mom was like, well, I only have three books for Vacation Madison. Do you think that's going to be enough? I was like, Yes, because one of them is five, six hundred pages. That is like one week's worth of vacation reading at like maybe half a week at least for my mom, depending on how much time we spend on the beach. So this is definitely a chunker. And I don't know what this one's about, but it's, it's about our guy Mike Tyson. And I don't know where she heard of this. I don't know why she decided she wanted to read this. She had many biographies. She asked me if the library had to bring on vacation. This was not one of them that I knew she wanted to bring, but it's going with us. So with the book bag a little bit emptier than it was before the start of this video, it is my turn to show you my books. And I have spent so many hours. No, I'm just kidding. I've spent, I've spent a couple minutes every couple days throughout the past couple weeks narrowing this down because I'm only bringing one book that was in that video where my mom bought all my books that I got at 60 seconds. Yeah, I'm only bringing one of those when I originally thought I was going to bring three. So I guess that's where we're going to start, and that book is The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. So why did I choose this one out of the other two? Um, I've already read the first chapter, and I liked it. So that is ultimately why I picked this one out of every other choice, which I, only, I mean, I have a bunch of choices, but... We narrowed it down to the three. Um, so out of the three, I picked this one because I have already read the first chapter and I did really like it. The first chapter was like 10 pages, so I know. So, so far into this book. But based on what I read, I just was really vibing with it. I did read a little bit of the other romance that I grabbed at Barnes & Noble called The Icebreakers and... It just wasn't for me. I wasn't really in the mood. It did not seem like a vacation read. Maybe it's because it's a freaking ice skater and a hockey player and I'm like, ugh, winter. This is an amusement park. I'm going to an amusement park. That, do, do, do you see the connection? Do you see the connection? 
connections. So this is about two characters, Rowan and Zara. I thought her name was Sa Sasha or whatever, but it's Zara, I believe. And basically, Rowan's grandfather, who he just loves so much, dies in the first chapter. And he gets a letter that has his grandfather telling him to inherit his part of the business, Dreamland, the amusement park. He has to become creative again, and he'll only inherit it when he creates, like, a new ride, I believe. And then apparently Zara, or Sasha, or whatever her name is, um, submits a drunk proposal to criticizing Dreamland's most expensive ride, and instead of being fired, she is offered her dream job. And those are the two main characters, and I did skip to kind of like the middle of this book, and they were bowling, and it just seemed like so much more fun. When I skipped the middle of Icebreakers, I did not get a fun summery vibe, but this one I did. Which book should I talk about next? because they're kind of all exciting, but I guess we'll talk about the least exciting one first, Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I believe in 2019, and I really did like it. I liked the writing style, I liked the story. It got a solid four star from me. And she's come out with a couple of books since that one, but this is the one that caught my attention. Now, to my knowledge, this is about a tennis player. Your girl likes the idea of tennis, but she cannot get that ball with that tennis racket. She cannot. She's tried. She can't. She's a volleyball player, okay? And tennis is not a sport where you can, like, fall and dive to your knees to hit the ball. It's not, okay? That's volleyball. But this intrigued me because I think I heard some controversy about it, and I just wasn't... Yes, please. But also, Haley Pham read this, and in my memory, she liked it. She gave it like a four star. And I just, this one just seemed really intriguing to me. It really called to me for a beach read, and I think the only way I'm going to read another Taylor Jenkins read book is on vacation. Because I'm more of a fantasy reader, but... This just seems like a book you could read on vacation. I can't really describe anything else, but when we booked this vacation, I knew this was gonna be one that I was bringing with me. There was other ones I was going to bring with me, and none of them made it this far. This one, however, did. And I think that says something about it. I love the cover. I think the cover is really cool and like just really pretty. I love the gold and I just want to read it. I I just I just want to read it, okay? And that's all I can really say is that it's calling to me. The next book is a wild one. Um, there's a story behind it. I'm bringing The Dawn of Fury by Ralph Compton. Now listen, this is a western, yes, but a patron told me it was very bloody and gory and she loves westerns and i was like do you have a recommendation and here we are so basically i helped this really sweet lady with a computer one day at the library and we were just talking afterwards she used to be a delivery nurse and we were just talking and she said that she ordered two old recliners for her crazy feral cats and there was a box of uh, westerns. I don't know if the books came with the chairs, but we skipped the box of books and they were westerns and she said she just started reading them and she really, really liked them. She said they're very interesting because of the wording that is used because it's western. So the fact that like prostitutes aren't called prostitutes but she she gave me an example I just can't remember what it's called um and so she just like really sold me what sold me the most though was when she said yeah they're really bloody and gory though so be aware and I was like <laughs> I love bloody and gory books okay like assassin is my favorite subgenre of fantasy so like gimme 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 what do you recommend 
And so I looked up the author, Ralph Compton, who she recommended, and this was like the first book in the first series, the first book of a series that I saw that we had, and that's why I picked this one. Okay, so I read the back of this book um, after I was like, I'm going to read this on vacation. And what it reminded me of is Jack freaking Henson's one man war. Okay. Jack Henson was a like civil war's best sniper. And he was not on either side of the civil war. He went after the people who kid killed his sons, cut off their heads and then staked them to the fence of his house. That's what this reminds me of. And I absolutely loved Jack Henson's story. I wrote my college history paper on it, which I got a fantastic grade on, by the way, I got an A. So I'm actually really excited to read this because of how much it reminds me of Jack Henson's story. And it's a revenge story, okay? It's a revenge story. So yeah. So we had a Western, a literary fic, and a romance. We got two more books that I'm bringing on vacation. And yes, they're both fantasy novels. We're going to be reading Joe Amber Copy for the first time. And Mark Frickin' Lawrence, baby. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, I'm, kind, I'm reading The Fathers of Fantasy. <laughs> Those are the other two books. So, I'm reading my first Joe Amber, Com Amber Crombie book. I cannot say his name quickly. I am reading The Blade Itself by him. And the entire reason I am reading this is because of Ian. Ian absolutely adores this book and Joe Amber, Cr Amber Crombie's books in general. And... I want to know why they're so beloved. Now, I do know that this is, like, not his best book. Not necessarily, like, it's terrible, but it is very character-driven of a story. And they get a lot more, like, plot-heavy and character and plot equally distributed among the, the hunkers in, like, book two and book three of this series. But... This is where you start with Joe, and I really want to read this, all because of Ian, and I hope I like Joe a lot better than Brandon Sanderson, because that was a major disappointment. I read Mistborn. I don't ever want to read it. I never want to read another Brandon Sanderson again. Thank you very much. So hopefully this will be better. And then we have the Mark Lawrence book, Prince of Thorns. Now, this was not planned. This was an impulse because originally I was going to bring one of the books I owned. I think the fifth book I was going to bring was one of them that I own. But ultimately this was a, an impulse because I read, I am currently reading as a filming this, the book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. And I am loving it so much. The Maze from Maze Runner meets a library and it is so fantastic and because of how much I really like that book it pushed me to finally get to the first Mark Lawrence book I put on my TBR. This is an assassin book and I like assassins and so this has been on my TBR for quite a long time for several years. This and Red Sister by the same person uh, Mark Lawrence, obviously. Um, I want to read both of those, but my library has this one, which is why this is the one that got checked out. Um, and it's not a very big book compared to some of the other chunky chunks I got on my TBR, so I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. I don't know if Joe, uh, if, I'm sorry, if Mark Lawrence was a one-time hit or whatever, but... This thing has been on my TBR for a very, very long time, and I loved the book that wouldn't burn. So I hope I'm going to love this book and The Assassin so much. Okay. These are all of the books that are going on my mom and I's vacation with me. The weight of a whole nother person. Take a lot off of that, but it feels like it. Anyway, 
I love you all so, so much. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I certainly hope to see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. Au revoir. Salut. Hey, adios. Farewell.